In this video, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically show your top n values, your top threes, top fives, top tens in your Power BI reports. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in Power BI getting your top n values from a table is not such a difficult task. And in fact, I even covered the three different ways that you can get your top end values in Power BI in a separate video. So if you want to know what those are, go check out that video. However, in that video, we didn't cover how you can create dynamic top end values, which is essentially just giving your users the ability to filter or change what the top values they want to see. So let's start with this demo file that I prepared for you today. It's the data model for this fictional company, Northwind Traders. Northwind Traders is a company that sells grocery goods internationally. And here in the data model, we have a few tables that we can use to analyze their performance and sales. We have the order information, so information about the orders themselves when they were ordered. We have information about the uh, specific orders, how many units of those products they ordered and for how much. We have information about the customers themselves, so which company they belong to and which country they belong to. We have the table of products, which is the list of the products that we are selling as a company. And then lastly, we have the categories table, which sort of organizes our products and groups them into specific logical categories. Beyond these tables, we have two helper tables that I created in the model. We have the calendar table, which is what we use for the majority of our time intelligence calculations if we need to. And then we have simply a measures table to house all of the measures and calculations that we might want to use. So we've already created a measure here called the sales, which is simply getting the total sales by multiplying the unit price to the quantity of all the orders. So with all these tables in our model, we've already pre-created relationships between them. So we don't really have to focus on this today. And that's really it for the intro. So why don't we start by looking at the total sales that we have per country? So let's go to the customer's country here to put it on a table and let's put in the measure that we created the sales if we sort this descending you will get a list of all the countries of all the customers where they belong to and the sum of sales for each of those countries so as you can see from this list there are a lot of countries available to us and most of the time we're not interested in all or seeing all of these dimensions, all of these countries. We just might want to see the top values, like the top five or top 10 countries. So in order to get just the top countries by sales, we first need to start by ranking our sales by country. And we can do that by creating a new measure first. So I'm gonna start by creating a new measure. I'm gonna name this one rank country by sales and we're going to use this function rank x which simply creates a ranking for us but we need to define how we want to rank this uh, this measure with so the first thing that we're going to provide it is a table so let's start by putting the customers table first then for the expression we want to use the sales which we've already created value we will ignore for order, we want to sort it by descending because obviously we want the highest selling country to be at the top of our list. And then that's it, we can skip the ties, hit enter, and drag that measure into our table here. And from here, you will see understandably that there's something going on here. All of the rows are showing one, which is not what we intend. We want to see uh, USA, for example, to be one, Germany two, Austria three, 
And that's because in the rank measure that we created here, we are simply just getting the rank by customer. The second thing is that the row context for each of these countries make it so that when you're doing the rank X, this table of customers is being cross filtered to just that specific country. So row one is just showing one country USA, which puts it immediately to just one. And then row two is looking at just Germany, etc., etc. So we need to find a way to remove the row filter context in this table or in this measure so that we are taking into account all the countries available to us. So the way that we do that is by wrapping the rank X table here into an all. So again, here you will see that it started to rank it as we sort of need it. You can see that, you know, the top uh, cells are being ranked as the lowest value and then the not so good selling countries are, you know, being ranked accordingly. However, you will notice that it's still not quite the same or not what we expect. And that's because it's being ranked by customers, individual customers, as opposed to countries. So what we need to do is in this table, we need to specify instead of getting the all for the customers table, we will specify the country column. And there you go. So we now have the rank of all those country by sales. Now that we have the rank values for each of our countries, the next thing that we need to do is to exclude those countries or those sales that are not within our specific top N. So to do that, we're going to create another measure. We're going to name this one top N sales by country equals to then we're going to simply start an if statement here. We're going to say if the rank, the one that we've created here, if the rank of that country is less than or equals to, let's say, the top five, give me the sales value of it. So just give me the sales value from my measure. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as blank. So we'll simply omit it we'll drag this new measure that we've created into our table here. And there we go. So you will see that with this if statement logic that we've added, what it does is it looks at the ranking in this measure and it's saying if the ranking value of that country is within the top five and we do that obviously by doing this check, if the rank is less than or equals to five, then give me the sales. If you are not, simply return blank. So now if we simply remove the sales and the rank here and just rename this top sales, so you will now get the top sales that you wanted per country. If you wanted to change, for example, if you wanted to see top 10 instead, you can simply change this into a 10 in the measure top end sales and you will get the top 10 sales per country. One thing to bear in mind though is that although you can make changes to the measures by just changing it in the formula bar here, your users won't have that option. So you need to give them the ability to change the top end values in the page itself. And this is where the parameters will come in. So to add a parameter into a page, you simply go to modeling new parameter, numeric range. This allows you to add a slicer to the page which your users can toggle to change the top end, basically. So we'll leave it to numeric range. The parameter, we will just change this to top end or top values. We'll leave it to a whole number. We'll say the minimum and the maximum. It will just leave it to one and 20. Increments to one and we can just set the default to one leave the add slicer to this page ticked and hit create. That will do two things. It will add a slicer to the page here, which you can use as a toggle to change the top values. And then it will create a DAX table on the right hand side here, which is the generated table, the top values, and then the measure which you can use to integrate into your custom measures, which is what we'll use shortly. 
So as you'll notice, if I keep dragging this uh, slicer, it doesn't really affect our table because we haven't made that link yet. So to make that link, we simply need to go to the measure that we created, the top end sales by country. And here, instead of putting the number manually, we can simply refer to what is selected in our parameter, so in our top values parameter. So in top values, this. So now you will notice if we drag this parameter around, it will change the number of countries that are being shown in our table all dynamically, which is great. So what's really great about this solution, beyond obviously the dynamic uh, top end parameters, is it's also affected by cross filters. So for example, if I add another slicer here to say categories, if I want to see what are the top sales by country in my table for a specific category here. So if I choose beverages, you will see that the top countries here also change in context with any slicers that is applied to it. So this is really handy if you want to do some further analysis into your tables. From here, you can even go one step further by making the titles of your tables dynamic. So I already covered this in the past, uh, but I will just show you because it's a very quick implementation. So in this table here, if we set up a title and I say top sales by country, and let's say in this, in this title, I want to dynamically set what top sales it is, is it top five, is it top 10, but based on what is selected in my parameter here, and I want it to do dynamically here. So to do that is pretty simple. We'll just create a new measure for the title. Title, top sales by country. And then we're going to create top concatenated with an app percent top values is the measure sales by country very easy and now we simply go to the text the title for the text for the title hit the conditional formatting field value set it based on the value in our new measure here so you'll see it says top five sales by country. And if we change the value here to top 10, that will also change dynamically. Another thing that you can do with this setup is to reuse the parameter to control other top n values or tables, not just for customers here. So for example, I'm gonna just delete this one. And let's say we want to see the top sales by let's say products and products is a good example to use because products, as you can see, has quite a lot of products in this list. So which means that although we want to see the sales by product, we are only interested in the top sales, top selling products, essentially. So we're going to try to do the same thing. So let's start by ranking them first. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to copy and reuse the code that we've just written. Top, so rank products by sales. So in the all, we're going to do, I'm going to add here products. sales descending let's just see if that is correct yeah perfect the next thing that we need to do is the top n sales so new measure by product rank product by sales top value perfect So you'll see it gives us the top 10, obviously, and we've already hooked it up to our parameter. So the last thing that we need to do is remove these two tables or these two fields. And there you go. You will see that as I change this parameter, both of these tables change their results as well. And that's really it for this video. 
I hope you now know how easy it is to show your top n values in your Power BI reports and make them dynamic using parameters. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.